everyone, welcome to Bikini Design Club. Today we will be sewing our baby swimsuit pattern Jupiter. I have here the flute sleeves pattern, I have the back and the front. So this is a very simple pattern, three pattern pieces plus the straps which are mentioned on the pattern. And today's fabrics will be, the as the lining, I will use this white fabric and then as my main fabrics I will use these two fabrics. I will also use the stabilizer and it's mentioned on the pattern because on the front we will have buttonholes. Not that we are going to use buttons but because I want to tie a knot on the front so the straps are adjustable. And so where I sew the buttonholes I use a stabilizer to be able to do the buttonholes without uh, ruining my fabric. So let's start by cutting all our pattern pieces and uh, we'll be back on the table to let you know what to do next. We are going to have uh, a channel on our back with an elastic. So the, the pattern is mentioned, the size of the bands that we need to cut of our fabric is mentioned on the pattern, but instead of going there, I just do something very easy. With my back pattern piece, uh, and using the fold line, I just, I have the measurement, right? So I just need to cut the fabric with the height mentioned on the pattern uh, for the back channel, which I will do four. I don't remember if that's the case mentioned there, but I know that four will be enough. So I just go ahead and cut four as a high. And then to make sure that this fits, I just need to place the fold on the fold and I know that I need to cut here. So this is quite easy. And so I just Yes. I just cut it here. I'll leave a little bit more just if I want a little bit excess. So I have my bands for my waist back cut it and now I'm gonna cut for the legs. Uh, for the legs, you can follow the measurement mentioned on the pattern, but again, uh, it's much easier for me sometimes just to cut a very long strap and then as I go along, I will cut um, what I don't need. So you do as you prefer. And I'm also going to do, yeah, I'm gonna use this fabric. Let me just check the stretch, the grain line here. Okay, so it's like this. So with my pattern pieces on my table, uh, we are going to start by sewing our uh, sleeves, okay, our tube sleeves. So uh, use the fold line, I've been already on the edge there and I'm going to sew. I'm going to be doing this on my straight stitch machine with a very large stitch and increasing the tension of, on, on my machine and leaving tails on the back and in the beginning and in the end so that I will be able to create the effect of the rush that I want. So that's what I'm going to do for my sleeves. For my back. This is the channel I told you where we are going to place the elastic afterwards and this is my lining. So I have my lining, I have my channel on the side of my lining and I have my back but we, we don't want our seam to be visible so we just grab our main fabric and we place it with right sides facing this side. We will place it on the edge here and we will pin. And once this is uh, in place, we can go to our sewing machine and sew this one on the straight stitch and this one I will do on my overlock or serger, as you call it. Um, and that's it. And then we'll be back on the table and I will let you know what to do more, okay? I'm just going to uh, get this on camera. I don't think uh, the bottom you need any help, but I will just demonstrate how I create the effects on my uh, tube sleeves. So I will show you in detail on my machine how I do that, them. The rest I will not get it on tape. So the first thing I'm going to set my tension to the maximum 
and then with my straight stitch I'm going to make it longer and now I'm gonna sew on the edge of my fluter sleeve so you saw me sewing this and as you can see the effect was this I didn't even had to pull my tail if I want I can now pull and tie two knots on each end to make this even more dramatic so it depends on your taste if you want to add more rushing here or not okay and we can set this aside for a bit this is already sewn together with the serger or overlock and if you turn this to the right side we now have our outside and inside and we want to create a channel here to place the elastic so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna flatten the fabric against the seam and I'm gonna fold the um, this strap that we have created here for the channel I'm gonna fold it like so I'm gonna place some pins and I'm going to sew very near the edge of all my folds making sure that my seam is stabilized against between all these layers okay uh, and I will then also do the the stitch for the channel so let me just put two or three pins to explain a little bit better okay imagine that I already pinned all the um, the edge so we will pin like so so you will not see on the outside you will not see the the channel and we will sew very near the edge so a straight stitch uh, from one edge to the other then we will sew again to create a channel for our uh, elastic uh, here I like to place one centimeter wide elastic and that's what I mentioned on the pattern but you can put whatever uh, elastic you want you can even put a larger wider elastic so you decide uh, the edge of this side of the channel you have two options one of the options is once we place the elastic and I will show you uh, you can fold the the fabric like I'm doing here and then sew it again and the elastic will be inside here or you can do the <laughs> I call it the lazy version and the lazy version is just um, sewing a line here and then trimming the excess fabric I actually did this on the diaper tutorial and uh, you can see on that tutorial if you want the difference between the lazy methods and the folding method but honestly uh, the fabric is soft and the cut of the fabric is not going to have any effect on comfort for the baby or anything uh, so it's up to you if you do the lazy version of uh, sewing and trimming or if you fold I will do the lazy version because I really think it doesn't affect the comfort of the baby neither the look and the finish look of our garment so I'm gonna do the lazy version okay um, and that's it so choose the elastic do one stitch near the edge place your elastic before or after you you decide and then do a stitch here enough for the elastic to move around inside and we'll be back on the table but j since we are going to our sewing machine we are also going to prepare with the stabilizer fabric and our lining uh, piece on the top of our front piece and sorry that my stabilizer is roughly cut it but it's it, it will be enough for what I want so I'm going going to leave more or less uh, half a centimeter seam allowance on the top and on this side I'm gonna do the same for this one so I'm gonna also place this one here and on my straight stitch machine I'm just going to on my straight or zigzag if you want I'm just going to go on the edge of the fabric and I'm going to secure the stabilizer to the lining okay and for now this is it let's go to our sewing machine and sew these areas 
and in fact we can also go ahead and prepare our straps so what I'm going to do and this is also mentioned on the pattern I uh, measured uh, I estimated 25 centimeters for the knot on the front so I know that this will be for my knot and then I'm going to leave just five centimeters and I'm going I'm going to place my uh, fluter sleeve. I'm just going to add a little bit of the rush effect here and once uh, they are looking the same size my two sleeves I'm going I think this is enough I don't want this to be too much so I'm gonna tie a knot here And starting here, so 5 centimeters after uh, my uh, 25, so 30 total, I'm going to secure my sleeve here. And I'm going to do this all along the edge of my sleeve, okay? And then you just... I'm going to show you. Uh, make sure you pin the edge here and let's pretend I've already pinned like so right and fold the fabric of your sleeve of your uh, strap fold it and pin Okay, so we will sew over these two layers plus our sleeve, our fluter sleeve, okay? And so once we reverse this strap to the right side, we will have the fluter uh, sewn on the edge of the fabric perfectly. So I have here my straps also uh, already pinned. Just to tell you that I'm going to apply elastic uh, on my strap on the edge when I sew here and I'm gonna use my overlock to do so. So straps, the back as I told you, and the stabilizer. On my straps, I'm not going to apply any elastic because once they are done, I'm going to insert a wide elastic inside here. And the size of the elastic is also uh, mentioned on the pattern, okay? So I will just slide the, um, the elastic in. So no elastic on my straps when I sew them now. Our channel for our back is sewn. Uh, I'm gonna cut my elastic. It says 25 centimeters, uh, 28 on my pattern, so with the seam allowances, so I'm gonna cut 28. And with the safety pin that I'm gonna look mine, it's here, I'm going to place my elastic inside my channel I'm gonna stitch uh, with a straight stitch securing securing it on one side and then I'm gonna rush this and I'm gonna secure the elastic on the other side with a straight stitch also then let's see how our straps are and what I, what I did here is the back parts I did it straight then we have our flute sleeve here and then on the front I uh, improvised this shape so while I was sewing I narrowed the ends this is optional you can go straight ahead and then you have to finish that edge but I did it like so so my straps are ready to be reversed to the right side use your loop turner 
and uh, turn the straps to the right sides. I've also secured my stabilizer and never mind that as I told you my stabilizer pieces are not two perfect rectangles but I wanted to use what I had so uh, and now we are going to place our fabric right sides facing together so we want this to be inside so we will place right side with this side of the stabilizer no the opposite the right side this will be our inside and this and we will place them together and we will pin the top area over here if you want you can hide this just by placing a strap here and you will only see one thin um, sewing line here instead of the squares but I'm not doing it I I don't mind and I don't want to add any more fabric than I need so I'm gonna straight stitch on the top edge there I'm gonna apply a little bit of elastic swimwear elastic on the top there just to stabilize the seam and to make it uh, more comfortable when you see it on the right side you will see that it's better with the elastic and I'm gonna sew it with my main fabric facing up so my elastic will be on the side of my main fabric it this will also help me hide the um, the lining once this is reversed to the right side so let's go ahead and uh, overlock this with the elastic reverse this and use the safety pin to go over with the, the elastic as i told you i was i was thinking uh now that i was doing this that when our strap is going to be attached uh, to the to the back because on the front as I told you we will tie a knot uh, we want our elastic to come to five centimeters past our flute sleeve so we want the elastic to come from here and then the elastic will come all the way to the back mine is short I will get a new one but we want it to go until the end here uh, I usually don't apply any tension to the elastic, I just leave it as it is and then you will adjust the front and it will be comfortable. As for the straps, the straps will be then attached to the back here and they will be sewn uh, with a straight stitch here and I rather do this in the ends despite you will then um, probably you will see inside here uh, the stitch but I, I rather do this in the ends. Uh, then do it now uh, because I like to choose the place where this lays where this meets the back once this is rushed so uh, and sometimes it's a question of taste you can do s straight straps or you can cross them this length is to cross but uh, some people like more on the edge some more on the center so you will see and you will sew wherever you want okay so i'm gonna leave this uh, sewing here to the end and as you can see my beautiful strap is almost ready so i'm gonna do this as i told you so my elastic um of course with the pin uh it broke loose so it was ruined and so the other uh, time I did this I sewed this already with the elastic inside uh, and so I I was able to have this elastic here because it was already there when I sewed the channel and then I just pulled and it was okay uh, but this time it's breaking so I'm going uh, with uh, normal braided elastic despite this is swimwear and usually I don't recommend braided elastic for swimwear but that's what I'm doing and it's a bit uh, less wide the elastic also so it's really not the one I wanted for my waist but it is uh, what I have to do today so I'm gonna do it and to make this even easier for me what I did is I marked the, the length that I wanted on my elastic. I marked, uh, let me just pin this clip. 
I marked on on the opposite edge and now I just need to pull my elastic until I find my mark and I know that I will be doing this with the right size so my mark is here so this is what I need I'm gonna put the pin and I'm gonna sew vertically on each side on the mark and I will have my back waist ready so as you can see my back is ready I'm I'm going to condense my effect here right now because when I attach the back to the front it's better and easier for you to sew if this is flat here on the edge so you will then adjust this but for now don't worry if uh, this is like this because it's better and easier okay so just to show you what I'm gonna do on one of the straps and then you can do for both of them um, I'm going to have five centimeters as I told you here and I'm going to have my elastic until the end here and cut I can cut this after I will just mark despite this has no tension so it's the same so I need to grab my elastic let me see if I can use my small 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 hole here to pull my elastic through it would be great let me see if I can use the small hole that I know it's there aha so I'm gonna use my loop turner to pull my elastic it's easier measure my five centimeters here so I need to have my the end of my elastic here okay I'm gonna put this here. We're using the same color of my fabric I'm gonna do a stitch here securing the elastic to the fabric and this is uh, the, the area where the front will be uh, through the buttonhole and with a knot, so I think uh, we will be fine with this. Uh, and then I will also probably So I don't want the elastic to roll, so I'm gonna stabilize the elastic again doing another stitch here. And I think it will be enough and then on the edge when we connect to the back also but so now for now I'm going to cut and we also already have a strap here I think uh, it will be pretty nice on the body I also went ahead and did what I told you with the stitch with the elastic here and now it's up to you if you want to prepare your um, buttonholes already or if you prefer to attach your back already to your front as on my table I don't want a lot of bulkiness I'm gonna do the buttonholes first and something I forgot uh, is trimming this this excess fabric here that I should have done before doing this effect because now it's harder uh, but I actually think this time I'm gonna leave it I think it's pretty so I'm gonna leave it but if you want to trim it, trim it before we, we apply the elastic, okay? So for now, I'm gonna do the buttonholes. I don't know if your machine has buttonholes or not. Mine has. And uh, I'm going to uh, do two but buttonholes uh, where I placed my stabilizer on top here. Uh, we know that we need to, to go through with our strap. So do a buttonhole a little bit smaller than your strap uh mark with a pen so it's on the same uh position on on your um on your front and uh we'll be back on the table if you don't have buttonholes on your straight stitch machine and you want to make this adjustable you can easily do a small thin strap uh like we do straps for bikinis right and we could easily attach 
on the inside here, imagine this was a strap, right? And it was ready. Before we sew this, we place like a loop inside here and we sew. And when we reverse this, we would have a loop. So you could go with your strap on the loop. You can do a big loop or a very small loop, you decide, okay? It's an option if you don't have the buttonhole, but I really think this is going to be very cute. So I think this is a good exper experiment. So let's go ahead and do the buttonholes. So I marked my buttonholes uh, from the edge of the fabric inwards two centimeters and one and a half from the top edge there and then i just dotted uh with this washable pen i just dotted what i where i want my buttonhole to be and i do did the same on the other side so now i'm gonna sew them i'm going to prepare my buttonholes and my machine has a button uh footer uh, so I, I applied one button just because I needed for my machine to calculate the, the size of my buttonhole. Uh, and I'm going to make a test before I do my final, on my final fabric. So I'm gonna grab, I've already done uh, yesterday, but I'm gonna grab a piece of fabric and do a test on my fabric before I actually sew my main fabric. So here the result of my test. This doesn't have stabilizer, so it's a bit strange, but this is actually too big. So I replaced the button and I'm gonna do it again. Um, and then I'm gonna do on my main fabric. So my straps, uh, I used the lightning stitch and I secured them just like I told you. And I did my buttonholes here and now with um, my seam reaper I'm gonna open the hole there or I can do it in just a moment. It's not perfect but let's, let's see. Now we want to uh, place our back with our front and we will place right sides facing together like so but we will start by reversing the front like so and now we will put the front with the front inside here And we will match the, the sides, so the four layers of fabric here, and then two layers. We must unfold this carefully to be able to do this until the end. So probably next time I will do the buttonholes afterwards. We are always learning. Yesterday I did this and I did the buttonholes after, but today I wanted to try to make them before. And now we know the results. So make the buttonholes after, so this is easier for you. So I've pinned the three layers and now I'm gonna add the fourth layer because it's easier for me to do this. Uh, we are going to sew this with our overlock without elastic, just straight ahead from one edge to the other. On this area here connecting the front with the back, we will be sewing over four layers of fabric but on the side here, we will only have two layers. Again, to stabilize my side seam, I will probably sew this with my main fabric facing up on my table and probably I will add some elastic only where, where I have two layers of fabric because I think I want when I reverse it to the right side, I want to make sure that I don't see my lining and with the elastic, I will, I'm sure that I will be able to do it. And on the edge here, since I've already done the buttonholes, this will be much harder for me. So I will uh, do the finish here with my straight stitch. Okay. So do the buttonholes after so that you don't have this problem. And we will connect both sides and also the lower part here of our bottom. On the diaper cover, uh, I added a snap panel here. And so if you want to add a snap panel on the lower part of your um, pattern, 
you can probably go ahead and see how I did on that tutorial and follow the same steps because it's quite simple to add the snap uh, panel um, between uh, the legs here. So if you want, go ahead and see it. So I'm going to pin, I'm going to sew this and I'm going to come back to the table to show you. So I've sewn the sides, I've applied elastic on the top part and so I'm going to trim all the excess threads that I have around and we will move on and uh, start preparing our legs. So trim all the excess you have. On, on the corner here we, we can also trim a little bit. Be careful not to trim of course the, um, the threads that we were just sewing but we can trim a, a little bit the excess in the corner and I'm gonna do this very quickly and we will move on. This is the perfect uh, time for you to open uh, the sides seam here. Go open and check if the connection here is okay. Okay, it's the best moment to do so because if the connection isn't good, maybe you need just like I did on this side to go ahead and stitch a little bit more just to make sure that it stays how we want. And that's it. And I'm going to trim the rest and I'll be back. Okay, everything is trimmed. I can now through the leg hole reverse this to the right side. and and we can prepare our leg holes so to prepare our leg holes we have many ways to do this but today uh, i'm going to show you one of the ways but if you want to see the diaper uh, cover tutorial you also have a way to do it there I could actually just sew this and create a channel like in the bikinis I do but for the babies I really like to create the channel and then go with the, the um, elastic insides and pull it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the two fabrics together and I'm going to use the straps that we have cut it and that are mentioned on the pattern to create a channel here and we are going to insert the, the um, elastic on this channel. This is a very soft lining, so it will be perfect for my, for my uh, leg hole. Uh, I didn't cut this according to the pattern. Usually I don't uh, need to watch the pattern. What I do is I cut them longer and then once they are all around the leg, I cut the excess. But it's up to you if you want to just check the, the measurement on the pattern or not. And to sew this uh, first um, strap here, of course, I want to make the the strap um, seam near the, the the seam that connects the front with the back piece. And so I'm going to start pinning all around the leg hole, right sides facing together. I mean, this is white, so it's it's not <laughs> anything that you need to care about the size the sides. But imagine if you are going to use something with a print that once this is sewn here, we will fold this to the other side and stitch here. So the part of the uh, fabric that you are going to see, it's not this one because afterwards we will also fold this to create the channel. So the part of the, of the fabric that you are going to see, it's this one. So if you see, it's the one that is facing towards my uh, back piece so it would be right sides facing together okay so just pin all around the leg hole and then go to the straight stitch machine and do a stitch here uh, like six millimeters from the edge so all around your leg hole and do the same on these sides and we'll be back on the table
So now that we have sewn very near the edge, folding everything inside like I told you before, I'm going to trim all the excess fabric, I fabric, sorry, uh, threads. And once that's all ready, the next step will be for us to close this channel inside so that we can then go uh, with the elastic. Something that I prefer doing at this moment is for me to open a small hole here on the seam because uh, uh, we will need a hole to insert our, el our elastic. So I prefer to open that hole now. I think it's easier for me. So I will just open one or two stitches. I think it will be enough. Okay, and I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, and now uh, again we have two options. We just, we trim the excess fabric here with our scissors, only this part, right? So that it's not a lot of bulkiness inside our channel. And then we flatten the, 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 this piece of strap that we have just sewn and we sew all around the leg hole. Uh, this, I'm gonna have an elastic here. It's this one. I'm going to apply this one. So my channel doesn't need to be very wide. Um, I will just make like one centimeter or less for the channel. And then I will also trim the excess fabric that I have here. But if you prefer, fold the fabric. And when you sew the fabric here, sew on the edge of the fold. That's also an option. And if you do like this, you don't need to trim the excess fabric. So it's up to you. Okay. So now I'm going to trim. First of all, I'm going to trim all the excess fabric that I have inside here and then I will close my channel. also going to go ahead and open my uh, buttonholes they were not so perfect as I wanted but I'm a bit in inexperienced with buttonholes so I think it was my fault they are very they are not very perfect but next time I'm sure I will do better so be careful not to cut your threads only the fabric that you want to cut also use our small scissor okay and now we just uh, as I told you fold and sew the channel if you want fold twice and sew so this is how it looks we have a channel created for our elastic. 
On the inside, we just need to trim. I'm gonna reverse this. We just need to trim. Oh, what's this? Oh. Well, we just need to trim the, this excess fabric that we have here, all around. Uh, be careful not to cut uh, a piece of fabric that you don't want to cut. I use this small scissor because it enables me to be much more precise and uh, for the finish to look good, even when I cut it uh, small bits by bits. And in the end, I trim again if I need. I, I, until I have this perfect as I like. Uh, and then we will go with the elastic with the safety pin all around and we will be able to include the elastic on our leg holes. So go ahead and also trim yours and we'll be back here to put the straps. We are almost done. So on the leg holes, this is how it looks. I think it's quite okay, the finish on the inside. Uh, on the back, as I told you, I didn't trim this excess fabric, but I even think it's pretty, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, now with the safety pin, you can pre-cut the, the elastic if you want. Uh, well, it says on the pattern for this size, 29 and a half so I can using my ruler I can 29 and a half 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. so I can mark here I don't like to pre-cut I prefer to leave a mark here and I can go ahead and already do the other one so it will be here but now with this long I prefer, this is of course an option, I prefer to do so. Now just go with the safety pin from one edge to the other on both leg holes. I'm gonna fast forward this so this is not boring for you. So I've reached um, the end of one of my uh, straps channels and I pull them outside and I'm actually going to do this a little bit smaller than I had predicted so I'm not going to the exact mark I'm gonna take two centimeters but I'm gonna with this uh, like so I'm going to overlap them Imagine that we are, we're going to sew there, right? So we would overlap them and we would sew over the two layers of elastic with a straight stitch uh, so a few times so that the elastic is completely secure and it's not going to open once you close your leg hole, okay? So overlap them and sew it and do exactly the same for the other one. After that, I will show you how to sew the straps and our swimsuit will be almost ready. So I've overlapped the elastic and I ended up just um, not <laughs> matching the, the measurement from the pattern just by not even one centimeter. Uh, so, but since we overlap them one centimeter over here, as you can see, this will be fine. And now let's repeat the process on the other leg. Okay, our legs are ready. Uh, if this is for your own kids, probably you can measure the legs and do the elastic exactly for her. But for me in this case, I don't have a baby in specific to place here. So this is the standard size. And now we just need to attach our back straps. Uh, and I will cross them so I will make them like so this is the front right if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and don't forget to leave your comments I always love to hear from you so I will pull the fabric until I reach my elastic okay and now I just improvise the knots I mean you can do so many 
you can do whatever you want you can do a complete knot you can do like a bow I'm gonna do like so around and through and I'm going to do the same on the other sides I really love this pattern and also the diaper cover if you want the baby to have less coverage but we made this adjustable on the front so that uh, the baby can still sleep uh, and not be bothered by any uh, knots or buttons or any other closure on the back and that's why we did the front adjustment Again, if you have a specific baby for, for this, uh, you can uh, now uh, see the measurements of your straps. In my case, I will give this as a gift to a friend of mine. So I'm going to leave this, I'm going to mark, but I'm going to leave them unsewn so that she can sew according to her own baby size so i'm gonna leave the, the straps here but what uh, should we do if you want to finish your straps i always end up making them longer um, but the goal is for you to adjust wherever you want we would place the strap here and we flatten the fabric and just underneath the elastic we sew the horizontal line of our strap to our main fabric and we do that we cross this one and we do exactly the same for this one on this side and this is your pattern piece ready i'm gonna pin and this would be the the piece uh, once it's done i think it's pretty nice if i had a, la a baby girl I would for sure give him give her uh, this one i hope you enjoyed guys see you soon bye